Hare Krishna everyone. Welcome to Salesforce Helping and Channel. My name is Aur Prajapati. And today I'm going to share with you some common and very important question which are asked almost uh, many interviews. Okay. So let me share my screen guys and uh, start questioning with you. Along with the question, I will also share the answer. Yes, here we go. Okay, so let me start one by one. Yes, so basically, uh, yeah. First question is, how do you orchestrate complex flow with branching and error handling and audit logging? Okay, so this question is asked. So now let's understand the answer. How candidate given the answer? Or if I was the candidate, how can I answer? So what we have to do, we have to build one orchestrator uh, flow, then calls subflow conditionally use fold a part to drive a single error handler subflow, right? Log metadata about execution, let's say a user object status into a custom object audit logs. So later on, if you get any error, so you can easily track that, okay? For dynamic, uh, for dynamically behavior store flows, right? And sequence ordering custom metadata mapping step to subflow. So this is the answer guys for first question. You can over on this and you can make it not. Okay. Now let me move to the next question. So basically you have an Apex class, right? That perform DML operation on a custom object, which is called invoice. How would you ensure that field level and object level security is respected in your Apex code? Okay. So for this, what you have to do, you have to use schema dot s object type and is accessible is is creatable is updatable is deletable methods to check permission. Also use security dot strip insensible to sanitize records. So this is the way you can make the uh, object level security respected in your Apex code. So here is a snapshot of the code, how you can write the code guys. Okay. So let's say you have to, in if condition, you have to check schema dot s object type, and then, you know, is accessible. Then you, let's say you need to perform a query. You need to perform some another operations. So you can do that. I hope you are good with this second question. So now let me move with the third question guys. Okay. So here is a third question. Let's say you wrote a class as a without sharing to bypass sharing rule for a system operations. What are the risk and how do you mitigate with them? Again, I'm repeating the question. You wrote a class without sharing keyword to bypass a sharing rule, which are written in your Salesforce system, right? A system operations, what are the risk and how do you mitigate with them? So let's understand the answer. So expose record to user without access, violate least privilege principle and only use without sharing when necessary example system integrations still enforce object field level security using uh, strip inaccessible and schema dot object type logo or edit access so this is the answer for this question guys if you want to understand in detail you can go and check in google and also reach out to me if you want to understand this topic in much detail okay okay so now the next question is your org uses a flow to update opportunity record. Your org uses a flow to update opportunity record, but update fail for some users. How do you fix it without giving with them full access? I'm again repeating the question, guys. Let's say you have a multiple user in the system, right? And uh, your org use flow to update some opportunity records. Okay. But update fail for some users and for some users it's working fine. Now the question is, how will you fix it? So now the answer is you have to set your flow run in system context, modify access. Okay. Alternatively, what you can do is, uh, you can basically, you can build, uh, custom Apex invocable method without sharing and control logic with a user role profile and check the permissions accordingly that specific user can, you know, uh, perform the operations whatever required as per the flow. 
now the question is you are exposing a rest apex uh, uh, end point how do you ensure only internal authentication uh, what i can say is uh, oh sorry yep you are exposing an apex rest end point and how do you ensure only internal authenticated applications access it so basically what you have to do is you have to use name credential plus authentication provider okay so use secure rest method with the at the rate or enable casable is equal to true or auth to authentication to zero scopes and implement a customer header check or whitelist ip and logic right like this request uh req request contact dot request string token so we'll get the code token and then we'll check with the expected token and if it is fine then i think throw the exception okay if it is not equal so this is the way we can actually expose and rest api endpoint and uh, we can ensure the internal authenticating uh, authenticated app access it okay so the next question is let's say you have a dynamic sql query built in apex okay and how do you ensure fls is respected you have a dynamic sql query built in apex and how do you ensure field level security is respected so basically what you have to do is you have to use describe field result to filter the fields that the user has the access to apex okay like this map string dot schema x object file field map schema x object type account fields dot get map and then here you can check it okay field map dot get named get describe is accessible then only add this particular field to this particular uh, map or string whatever is it okay so guys the next question is for you a developer directly use apex to return all account field to lwc access them dynamically what's wrong and how would you correct it so i'm just leaving this question for you if you know the answer please write in comment otherwise i'll provide you the answer your apex logic depend on custom metadata record how do you write a test class for it this is the again this question is for you guys this is very important questions many times this question is asked in many interviews so make sure you are uh, writing this answer okay so answer is you cannot insert custom metadata and text context use is test seo data to do only if necessary not recommended actually it, it is not recommended by the sales force and it is also not the best practices but in some exceptional scenario we can use it right prefer switching logic to use custom setting where insertable alternative design apex to gracefully handle absence of metadata and test of context what are the best practices checklist in apex test class okay we always hear about the best practices for the apex class for the flow for the trigger but now here we are talking about the what are the best practices for the test class okay so let's understand always test a positive and negative scenario it doesn't mean like only you have tested the positive scenario negative scenario always make it positive and negative either it's covering more than 75 coverage may we should need to make sure test class is what mean test class is something which try to test your logic what you have written is it working fine or not right along with the unit testing second is use assert to verify logic not just code coverage so basically this is will help you to understand whatever methods whatever class you are going to cover are they really uh, covering or you can say are they really fulfilled by your test class whatever data is required second is third one sorry is avoid using seo data true unless absolutely required i mean there is so much kind of things if required then only we should use seo data is equal to true otherwise we should avoid it use test data factory for consistency actually what happen is sometime you know um, definitely we have to write a test class and uh, there are so many objects business has you know account and all custom and standard so many maybe 100 objects they have or more than that so initially if you go with the flow like sales flow so you can write a one you know test data factory later on you required you can call those methods and you can create the classes okay clean up with set test dot set up when sharing the record so now the next question is guy how do you, how do you ensure your flow handle error gracefully when calling an apex actions or external system use fold path to apex or http call out an event to get a detail to a custom object like flow error right display a user friendly error screen if a screen flow example fold path variable to store so we have a two kind of this thing flow dot fold message 
and flow fold type okay now the next question is your record trigger flow on the opportunity after update is not executing what could be the reason so there may be reason like check if the entry condition formula is wrong or too strict ensure flow is active and set to run on update confirm if the field is being updated is actually ch changing like is change sometime we you know have this condition is change then only our uh, flow should be executed right but uh, in our scenario we need to check why it's not getting executed so we have to make sure these all points guys double check if other flows or trigger roll back the transaction side entry sometime maybe happen like you know some other uh, flows are running and they are roll backing on that okay now the next question is let's say you need to relate a custom object delivery to a order if delivery should only exist if order exist okay delivery should only exist if order exist and its ownership follow order which relationship do you choose here and why so as you said like what they said is if delivery should only exist if order is exist let's say they have deleted the order so that means delivery is also get deleted so now only one thing is come in our mind which is master delivery relationship because you want cascade deletion delivery related when order is deleted delivery should inherited sharing and ownership and all of some field can be created on the order so these are the you know points uh, why i was thinking okay, we should have here master delivery relationship okay so next question is when creating a relationship field what does the child relationship name mean so guys it is the api name used to refer the child records in the relationship query used in sql like this so let's say uh, there is a case and feedback feedback is a custom object and case is standard object but you are writing a one you know uh, relationship between these two objects so the relationship is nothing but when you need to do the inner query between uh, you know uh, parent to child so in that scenario it will be like this or whatever name you have given that will be appear r will be there okay in terms of uh, custom object okay so next question is let's say you have built an lwc to display account data using wire get record the component load but the data does not appear what could be the wrong the field list pass to get record is likely incorrect field must be uh, imported individually and reference as a constant let's say like this important field name from sales for schema dot account name ensure the record id is not undefined verify if the user has fls access to this field or not so this is the answer regarding to this so how do you ensure your lwc respect fls field level security how you make sure it so basically for it what you have to use is do is use apex annotations with sh uh, with sharing and check fls using strip in accessible okay now the next question is your lwc loads slowly and when displaying a list of 500 records what can you optimize it right so implementing a pagination or lazy loading it's very important concept here right load data in chunks like 50 records at a time avoid heavy dom manipulations inside the loops uh, last but not the least use virtual scrolling or data table uh, with the limited page size so that can help to optimize and uh, you can say a performance of your lwc component okay let's say you want to use or call a lwc inside a screen flow you have already one screen flow and you want to call one lwc component what should you do this for this set is exposed true in the components meta xml and define target and target configuration for lightning flow screen and use at the rate api property for input and output variable okay so this is the way you have to make it now the next question is let's say you want to pass a complex list account from one job to another what is the best async apex method so again i'm repeating the question guys let's say you want to pass a complex list account from one one job to another what is the best asynchronous asynchronous apex method here so basically uh queuable will be the best approach here support complex object type list map custom classes allow chaining unlike wedge uh patch apex the execute method access custom parameter as well okay let's say uh, you have we have deployed a schedule apex job but it's not running what could be the wrong apex class might not implemented schedule the schedule express might be invalid job was not actually scheduled check in schedule job under setup and class might be missing global access modifier if used with the system dot schedule 
Now the next question is what authentication method are available for integration seal for securely? So we have multiple, we have a auth 2.0 ZWT username password web server flow. Another one we have a name credential plus authentication provider. Third, we have the session ID. Fourth one we have a user mutual TLS. Okay. Now the next question is guys, what happen if some recording integration fail and while others succeed, how do you handle this scenario? So build a retry logic and a logging in external system or in Salesforce, use save point plus rollback. If multiple record uh, should succeed, fail together, consider like custom error logging object here to be answered, right? Very important question, when and why we should use a dynamic SQL. So basically when a field name or object name are not known at a compile time, use the another only SQL, dynamic SQL. Use database dot query string or dynamic string building with the variable inputs. Always sanitize input to avoid SQL injections. Okay. Uh, important question is, let's say there is one test class which is failed in production but work in another sandboxes. Why? What are the possible causes? So guys, possible causes may be missing test data, no sale dot equal true validation of workflow. I mean, these are not in the picture right now. So we can check, maybe some existing are there, but yeah, for the debugging purpose, we can check. Different configurations fix, create all necessary data in the test class using the test method or factory classes. And those data you should use inside your main method where you are calling the other uh, Apex class, okay? You are calling a restful ABA service to fetch shipping costs. Sometimes the service is down. Business wants automatically retry within 30 minutes, max three times. So basically on a call out failure, NQ queuable job with the retry method stored in a custom object. Retry logic read number of attempts, use a schedule job every 15 minutes to retry a pending records and log response in a log object with the correlation ID and status for a traceability. Use name credential for a authentication. So these all are the questions guys, you can try to remember it and you can try to note down. So maybe it can help you to understanding more regarding to this poll question. So stay tuned to the Salesforce Helping and channel. Thank you so much for connecting. Bye-bye.